Cheating in online video games is obviously a massive market. Millions of people every year find themselves exploiting and using hacks. But how many of them can honestly say they know how it works? I don't think many people can. So today I'm going to explain how most of these hacks work. But before I do that, this video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. We all know how easy it is to use hacks, but making them is a completely different story. You have to be well versed in computer science, software engineering and mathematics. Luckily, if you're looking for a fun and easy way to learn more about these topics, I'd like to introduce you to Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science and computer science interactively. They offer thousands of excellently curated lessons, which are designed to be interactive and engaging. Before making this video, I went through their new creative coding course and it was awesome. You'll learn new and interesting techniques to use with loops and variables in Brilliant's signature engaging fashion. So whether you're a student or a professional looking to upskill, you can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org forward slash CAS or by clicking on the link in the description down below. The first 200 of you will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the video. Video games are programs and when you run a program it gets mapped into your computer's memory space. The memory that I'm referring to here is of course random access memory. Programs on your computer use RAM to store all of their temporary information including the state of the program itself. In the specific case of a video game this means that all of the game's important data, such as your health, your position, the positions of your enemies, and so on, is all stored in your system's RAM. At this point, we arrive at the most basic understanding of game hacking. By accessing and then carefully manipulating the game's memory, we can force the game to give us an advantage in various ways. For example, in most single-player games, you could just write a ridiculous number to your health address to give yourself god mode. In online games, you might use the positions of your enemies to make wall hacks or aimbot. In most online games, you wouldn't be able to give yourself god mode unless the game developers are completely incompetent. That's because your health should be calculated on the server, not on your client. Unless you find a vulnerability in the server, you will not be able to modify server-sided data. Now that we've established that game hacking, at a fundamental level, is just a matter of memory manipulation, the question becomes, how do we access that memory to manipulate in the first place? Well, let me introduce you to the bane of the paster's existence, the offset. Earlier I mentioned that when you run a game, it gets mapped into memory. What I didn't mention is that every time it gets mapped into memory, it gets mapped at a different place. This means that if you were to find your health address in a memory scanner like Cheat Engine, the next time you run the program, that health address is going to be invalid because the game is running in a different place on your computer. The most important thing to understand though is that the structure of the game never changes unless the developers update it. Every time you run the game, the exact same thing runs. It just gets executed in a different place in memory. This means that if you reverse engineer the game and let's say you find your local player's pointer 20 bytes into the program, every single time the game runs, your local player's address is going to be your game's address plus 20 bytes. In this situation, that 20 bytes would be considered your local player's offset. But another issue arises. Offsets are absolutely useless by themselves. They mean nothing. The word offset itself implies that it is relative to something. Offsets are always relative. And in this case, the local player offset of 20 bytes is relative to the game's base address. So how do we get that? Well, there are many ways, but no matter what, you're going to use your operating system's API because that is what determines where your programs run. This is why basically every single cheat uses offsets, and that's why they are so important. We use them to reconstruct the game in our own cheats, because as I mentioned earlier, the exact same game is always run. The only time offsets break is when the game has been updated and code has changed. To find offsets, we generally begin by searching for important values in the game's memory. Once we've located something interesting, we might attach a debugger to find out what instructions access the address in question. At this point, by examining the disassembly, we can usually extract an offset. Of course, we then repeat this process when the offset inevitably breaks during a game update. A common way of alleviating the problem of offsets constantly breaking is to introduce pattern scanning into your cheat. I've already got a video about this, which you should definitely watch, link down below. But the idea is that you generate a unique pattern of bytes that takes you to a piece of data in the game. This piece of data could be your local player's pointer, maybe the entity list, or even an important function in the game. With all this being said, pattern scanning is still limited because you cannot replace all offsets with patterns. Most likely, your local player will be a class pointer and your player's health will be a field in that class. You could pattern scan for your local player's pointer very easily. In fact, it is best if you do because it won't break each update. But what you cannot scan for is your health variable. In this case, you would pattern scan for the local player pointer, and once you have it, you would use 
an offset to access the whole field in the class. Basically, every cheat has to contain offsets, but not every cheat needs pattern scanning. At this point, you should understand that creating cheats is a matter of manipulating a game's memory in your favor. You should also understand that we use offsets and patterns to dynamically locate the important data in a game. The only thing I have yet to explain is how we actually manipulate the game's memory. I've mentioned why and where we do it, but I haven't mentioned how. This is also the point where anti-cheats come into the equation, because an anti-cheat's job is to stop you from manipulating a game's memory. The simplest way to access a processor's memory externally is by opening a handle through the operating system and then calling the read and write process memory functions. The problem is that opening handles with open process is usually detected. Therefore, you might want to look into handle hijacking if your game has an anti-cheat. There are also internal ways of accessing memory, namely through the process of DLL injection. By forcing a game to load your library, you gain complete memory access. You can literally access the game's variables directly through pointer arithmetic with offsets. Internal cheats are usually reserved for hacks that are heavyweight and require the best performance though. Basically think of any big CSGO rage cheat. Those were all internals. The final general way we access memory is via the kernel. By coding your own driver and communicating with it through a user mode application, you can read and write memory from the kernel without using the Windows API. If you'd like to learn more about anti-cheats, be sure to check out my video about anti-cheats and how to get around them. The link will be down below. Anyway, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you look forward to more in the future. Be sure to check out my socials down below. And as always, shout out to the following sexy patrons for your continued support. As always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers and peace out.